Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. We bless your name. We honor you. Lord, our Father, it is unto you we are gathered this morning to hear from you, to receive from you, to pour out our hearts unto you. Above it all, to fellowship with you this morning. Let your presence impact upon all of us, even in this gathering this morning. And let your will be done by it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for all that we will do here today. Let grace be released on all the participants and operators. And let wisdom be manifested even as we coordinate all this today. We give you all the praise. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Good morning and welcome to today's morning devotion. Praise is the food for God, and that's the only thing we can offer him. So let us go now and worship his holy name. you 
Yes, I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hands than to be the king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread sway. Welcome our brother, Elder Uchene, as he leads the general prayer, and we pray together in one accord. Hello, good, good morning. We are going to be praying today for our uh, understanding, knowledge and understanding. You are praying for yourself, for knowledge and understanding. Our first prayer, let us thank God for today. Let us thank God for his good word sent to us every time on this platform and for impacting our lives with knowledge and understanding. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, according to your word, you said that he, he sent your word and delivered them from um, the destruction. And, oh, Father, we thank you this morning uh, for your good word you sent to us every time on this platform. And for impacted our lives with the knowledge and understanding in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. We bless you. We worship you, oh Lord. Father, we are grateful for your good word. You sent your word and delivered us from destruction and sent your word, Father, oh Lord. Thank you for sending your word every time on this platform and for impacting our lives, oh Lord bringing us out from captivity with the knowledge and understanding that you have sent us, O oh Lord, turning every situation around for us in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you, O oh Lord. You are a great God, everlasting Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Our next prayer, number two. Father, be merciful unto me and turn away anger from me. Be gracious to me. Be thou an arm unto me and my salvation in trouble. Father, in Jesus' name, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, O Lord, O Father, be merciful unto me, O Lord. Be gracious unto me. Turn away your anger from me. Be gracious to me, Lord. Be thou an arm of, um, to me, O Lord. Save my soul. Give me, save me salvation. Be a time of salvation, time of trouble. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we call upon your name this morning, be gracious unto me, O oh Lord. Oh, Father, be gracious unto me, according to your kindness, O oh Lord. Be merciful. Father, show me mercy. Show me mercy, O oh Lord. Show me mercy, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, show me mercy. Turn away your anger from me. Be gracious to me, Father Lord. Be thou an arm 
be down an arm unto me and my salvation in the time of trouble. Oh, Father, oh Lord, be merciful. Show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Show me your mercy, oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Our prayer number three. Father of lights, Father of lights, in whom, in whom there is no variable, neither shadow of turning, light up my spirit and enlighten my darkness in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, as we call upon your name this morning, oh Father, as you said in your word, every good gift and every perfect gift from, comes from the above and in come down from the father of lights with whom is no variables neither shadow of turning oh father be merciful to me light up my candle for the lord will light up my candle and the lord my god we enlighten my darkness oh father according to your word father law of lights being whom there is no variable no sh neither shadow of turning light up my spirit light up my spirit the lord will light up my spirit and enlighten my darkness oh father light up my spirit oh lord you are great god father oh lord be gracious unto me be merciful unto me light up my spirit and enlighten my darkness according to your words psalm 18 28 for thou will light up my candle the lord with my god we enlighten my darkness. Father, O oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Luke 28, 28 said, And unto, unto the man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord that there is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, fill me with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, that I may walk in the fear of the Lord and in the in the comfort of the Holy Ghost with the knowledge and understanding. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I call upon your name. Fear me with the spirit of fear of the Lord, spirit of fear of the Lord, that I may, that I may walk, that I may walk, uh, that I may walk in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of, in the comfort of this Holy with knowledge and understanding. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, as you said in your word, Psalm 1, 1 to 11, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the being of wisdom, a good understanding of all they that do his commandments, his praise endure it forever. Oh, Father, oh, Lord, the fear of the Lord is the being of wisdom. Oh, Father, Lord, and to, de and to depart from evil is understanding. Oh, Lord, as we call upon your name this morning, fear me with the spirit of fear of the Lord, that I may walk worthy of my calling and fear of the Lord, and in the, in the comfort of your Holy Holy Ghost, with the knowledge and understanding. Oh Father, fear me with the spirit of your knowledge and understanding. Oh Father, according to your word, for you this cause, oh Lord, since I have heard it, fear me, O oh Lord, with the knowledge of your will. In all social understanding and and uh, on in all social wisdom and understanding, that I may walk worthy of you, pleasing you in all things. Oh Father, according to your word, he said, For this cause, we also Colossians 1 9, we since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you may walk. We might be filled with the knowledge of your way, of his will, in all special understanding and special understanding that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of you. Prayer num number five. Oh, Father, oh, Lord, fill me with this, with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and special understanding that I may I might walk with you of you, pleasing you in all things. Father, oh Lord, we thank you this morning. You are a great God. Father, fill me with the knowledge of your will, in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we call upon your name. Fill me with this with fill me with the knowledge of your will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that I may walk with and my work worthy of you, pleasing you in all things, in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Father, oh, Lord, according to your word, oh, Lord, since that day, 
according to pray, according to pray, nurses to pray and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of, under, of your will and all wisdom and special understanding. Oh, Father, oh Lord, fill me with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and special understanding that I might walk worthy of you, pleasing you in all things in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Father God, you are great God. In Jesus' name, oh Lord, I pray. Prayer number six. Father, oh Lord, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in your knowledge that the eyes of my understanding be enlightened in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we call upon your name, you are a great God who oh, give me the spirit of your wisdom and revelation of in your knowledge that that in that my eyes of understanding will be enlightened in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, Lord, the, open my eyes of understanding, oh, Lord. Open my hand of understanding, let be enlightened, that the eyes of un my understanding will be enlightened in Jesus' name. Give me the spirit of your wisdom and revelation of your knowledge, oh, Father, that also the eyes of my understanding may be opened may be opened, may be opened in the name of Jesus. Father, oh Lord, according to your word in Ephesians 1.17, he said that, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of your calling and the, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sense Isaiah 33 says and wisdom and knowledge shall be established of the times and and uh, strength of knowledge the fear of the law is treasure Father, in the name of Jesus, we call upon your name. We call upon your name. Father, give me understanding of the depths of your love and grace of your love, that your word, and so that I can continually grow in understanding, walking in the light of your will. Let us pray. Finally, Father, oh Lord, give me the spirit, give me the understanding of the depths of your love and grace through the word so that I can continually grow in understanding, walking in the law and the light of your will. Let's pray. Father, O oh Lord, according to your words, Psalm 119 verse 34 said, give me understanding and I shall keep thy law. Oh yeah, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Father, O oh Lord, give me understanding. Oh, of the depths of your love and the grace through your word so I can continually grow in understanding, walking in the light of your will in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Father, oh, Lord, you are great God. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. Father, oh, Lord, give me understanding and I shall live. Give me understanding of the depths of your love and give me the grace. Give me the grace of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit, give me the grace, give me the grace, O oh Lord, to, through your word, that I, I can continually grow in understanding, walking in the light of your will. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elder Uchina. God has given us his word for instruction in righteousness to make us complete. <clears throat> Today's scripture reading will be taken from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, 36 to 47. So let us all open a Bible together to Acts chapter 2, 36 to 47. Let's welcome our sister, Sister Muriel Colbusin, as she reads for us today. Sister Muriel. Good morning, family. This is Acts chapter 2 in the New King James Version, um, verses 36 through 47. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God have made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, 
both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did, they, did he testify and exhort saying, save yourselves from this un, untoward generation. Then they gladly received his word, were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as um, be saved. This is the reading of the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Muriel. Paul says you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So let us welcome our brother, Elder Taiwo as he gives us the exhortation today. Welcome, sir, Elder Taibu. Well, I do thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for inviting me. Well, good morning, uh, saints of the Most High. Praise, praise, praise our Lord Jehovah. Hallelujah. I would like to start off by saying a short prayer. Heavenly Father, please send us your word this morning in a manner in which only you can. And for granting us the wisdom to understand and appreciate your word as we end back on learning from you this morning. Send us the word in the way only you can, Father Lord Jehovah. And may the things we learn from you this morning forever bless and shape our lives strongly in Jesus' mighty name, amen. I would next like to thank the man of God, my pastor and great friend, Pastor Adi Inka for granting me the opportunity to bring the word to you this morning. It is always an opportunity that I do not take lightly and I greatly appreciate it, sir. The title of my charge this morning is What is Fellowship? Again, what is fellowship? Fellowshipping in the Christian world is such a byword that seldom do we take the time to reflect on what it truly means and the critical role it plays in our Christian, in our Christian journey. In my brief research on the subject, I found out that the Greek uh, um, term kiononia, which describes the unity of the spirit that comes from Christians' shared beliefs, behaviors and convictions is key to defining Christian fellowshipping. The term koinonia explains that fellowshipping produces our shared cooperation in God's worship. God's work and God's will being done on earth. 
Now, my brethren, if we look at this great KCAI morning devotional program in which I am delivering this message to you this morning, we would notice without a doubt that it clearly represents, represents what Christian fellowshipping is all about. So firstly, it produces our shared cooperation in God's worship. And that is, none of us are paid to attend this program. But because we know it is about God's worship, we as true believers naturally enjoy attending it as an effective way of worshiping our Lord. And secondly, I cannot count how many times um, uh, a pastor, I believe it's um, um, Kofi, enjoins us to invite others to partake in experiencing, to inviting others to partake in experiencing this platform that is blessing and enriching our spiritual lives. This is, this I believe is how this platform serves in doing, in doing God's work. Now, now thirdly, the depth of wisdom taught and shared every day is very instructional about impressing on each and every one of us of what God's will is and what our role as individual saints are in propagating this will on earth, amen? It is what reminding us that since the committing of the original sin, God's prime desire for all humans ever since was for the souls to be saved and for them to live eternally in his kingdom. As we also know, God has given the control of this earthly realm to the control of Satan until the second coming of our Lord, of our Lord Jesus. So important was the saving, was the saving of souls to God that he sacrificed the life of his only son for this powerful purpose. However, people of God, Satan and his demons are not standing, they're not standing idly by and watching people become saved. No, they are waging a very serious battle in ensuring that those souls absolutely do not get saved. This is why Matthew 11 verse 12 actually tells us this. And from the days of John the Baptist, of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers, suffers violence and the violent uh, take it by force. Let us remember, let us remember the plight of the earliest Christians and how they were persecuted first by Jews and later by the Romans and how fellowshipping was the only way they could keep their faith alive even against the pain of death, from which many of them actually suffered harshly. Yet their faith remained unshaken. Just as our Lord Jesus is often depicted as a shepherd and tending to the needs of his sheep and how strongly that image resonates with us, we can wisely see that the leaders of Christian fellowships and organizations are truly shepherds of their congregations. And the wily um, Satan and his demons know this. They certainly know this and will often launch attacks mainly at our leaders, knowing that when you defeat the leader, the sheep will scatter. This is why anytime we are called upon by our church to pray for our pastors, we must so diligently do it. Amen.
the effects of Satan's dominion upon this earth is powerful and real. You can meet a perfect stranger and invite them to a social function and they gladly oblige you. However, try, try inviting them to a church or mentioning Jesus' name to most of the people out there and they will find every excuse not to attend and may even avoid having any physical um, contact with you, acting towards you as though you had a plague. This is satanic influence, people of God. This is satanic influence. How is it that you can pick up a massive novel and easily read it from cover to cover, but would yet start to fall asleep when you attempt to study just a few pages of the Holy Bible? My brethren, this isn't coincidental. It is the effect of Satan's wicked dominion over this earth. Fellowshipping is one of the most effective ways with which we as Christians can overcome the evil plan of the enemy, amen? It is my personal joy for me as a father to witness an amazing change in the behavior of my daughter, named Trinity, from a young lady who took offense anytime you spoke anything about God's word on the subject of gay, of gays or lesbianism to now being baptized and winning souls for Christ. Not through my church, which she had visited many a times, but on her own, in her own way. On her day of baptism, a day of baptism was so special to me that I let her know that giving a life to our Lord Jesus meant more to me than her bagging a doctorate degree. So shortly after the baptism, the attacks came, mostly from old friends and family members who she, at who she attempted to win over to Christ. They castigated her as belonging to a cult and let her know that they were dismayed by a new lifestyle. Whatever happened to that bubbly old Trinity? People of God, Jesus is what happened to that old Trinity. And I am so proud of the new Trinity. Close fellowshipping with our new brothers and sisters in Christ and a strong support from her father is what enabled my daughter to overcome the violent attacks of Satan and his demons from wrestling my daughter back into their fold. Through my daughter's experience, I could better understand the great meaning of Christian fellowshipping, amen? So people of God, I would like to close this morning by saying that winning souls is our most sacred duty as Christians. Again, let me repeat that. Winning souls is our most sacred duty as Christians, but planting those souls firmly in God's kingdom and ensuring that they do not go back to their vomit is just as equally important. Because as we could see from Matthew chapter 12, verses 44 and 45, that the demons of hell will not easily let God's children go. Praise the Lord, Jehovah. Thank you, people of God, for having me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Elder Taiwo. Now it's time for our personal prayers. Let us go to God and take all our requests before him.
Glory to God. Glory to God. We thank God for how fire has led us this week. Looking in the, the subject of uh, fellowship. Paul says, for your fellowship in the gospel. <laughs> your fellowship in the gospel. Just as, as we had uh, a little earlier by our elder, fellowship is a joint participation. Of course, with common interest and activity. And we already know what we mean by that in our own context. So through this medium now, we're in fellowship. Fellowshipping together with one another and centrally with our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That common interest, that activity, that it becomes the overriding factor. Like the Lord Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together, actually I may, I may expand it in fellowshipping, gathered together fellowshipping in my name. That in his name becomes the binding and common interest. He said, I'm there. I long for it. So without all doubt, even on this unimagined of men uh, platform that we are using now, I say unimagined because this was not even in, in view a few years ago, but he's still with us. This is something that is hard to share this. I don't mean this platform, I mean Christian fellowship. I don't mean just this platform. Christian fellowship is something that is hard as believers worldwide. Something to carry, something you look forward to with your brethren wherever you gather. Then I was glad when they say, let's go to where we gather. I, I'm paraphrasing it with my own words. So let's go to the house of the Lord. Let's go to where we get. And when you look at that Psalm 122, it's beautiful. I was glad when they said, let's go to the house of God. I said, my feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Why? Because Jerusalem, their place of fellowship, is, is, is city built and compact together because their goals, they said, without goals, the tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto his name, to praise his name, to worship his name. Yes, that's what we come to do. And in that atmosphere, Great things happen. He said, For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of David, even the set thrones of judgment. In that atmosphere of fellowship, unbelievable things happen. Let's always crave the fellowship of the saints because it's what belongs to us. Because in conjuring that, we have the Lord Himself in our midst. If I may use, say this way, is the cheapest way <laughs> to get the Lord in your midst. If you don't know whether God is there, God has said in his name, he said, when you do that, I'm there. But that true fellowship, whether in your house, on the, at the park, anywhere, is there. And when it's there, things happen. So as believers, we should be enjoying and expressing fellowship in, in the gospel. Desire it. Something we should enjoy. And something we should be eager to express. There are many other ways by which we do it. And as we keep doing it, the wisdom of God keeps manifesting itself for us. We thank God for this week. It's been an amazing week. And we bless the name of the Lord. Just like you had the preacher himself say, let's keep inviting people. Let's keep sharing this gospel. Let's keep inviting people to this platform, to our churches, to come share fellowship. Come a fellowship and come before the presence of the Lord. Remember, this program runs Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. Mountain Time. We'll be back together again Monday looking at another dimension from the word of God, just to refresh our soul. Why not 
invite your friends, colleagues, co-workers, family members. Don't say they are too young to learn. When the power of God touches them, circumstances, situations will change. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for an amazing week. Thank you for a most profitable week that you have taken us through, and we bless your name forever. You said it. The part of the dust is as a shining light. It shines more and more and more and more to the perfect day. So we expect to shine brighter, better, even as we continue on this platform. Lord, I commend all your people on this platform into your hands today. O oh, Lord of heaven, breathe the breath of life over everyone. The breath of life. He said, when you put that breath, man became the breath of life that makes everyone become whom you have proposed and intends us to be according to your word, the bread that transforms sickness to health, the bread that brings liberty on all fronts, the bread that changes and transforms life. Let that bread come to everyone hearing me today that transforms them to what they ought to be. Thank you, my Father. We give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Let's share the goodness together. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless you. See you next week. Have a most fruitful weekend. Jesus is Lord.